Well, it's Friday. And it's time to have a look at this. Welcome to the joint. on a Friday afternoon, but that's all right. I'm done. I'm just screwing around now at this point. Gotta go catch a bus, but... Oh, oh, oh. We'll, we'll get into this more here in just a little bit. The Rat Rays Wallace Flake. So, hang tight with me. out there we've got the bake a bone oh, I want to get that for Lily Mrs. Justin's joint wants to get this for Lily two cups of flour half cup of milk baking powder and peanut butter can we get that for her for her birthday <laughs> our dog did just turn 11 it's $8.99 are you going to use it for $8.99 let's see what it's got in it Well, all right, guys. Now that all the tomfoolery and whatnot is... <sighs> really, dog? Get out of here. Hey, hey, go away. Go away. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go. The uh, dingo decided she needed to be under the desk right about now. Knocking into the microphone stand, of course, which is... 
you know, that's just always awesome. So, the task at hand is Rat Ray's Wallace Flake. Now, what this says is, let me put the lid back on so that I don't just spill it all over the place. Even though these flakes are pretty, the dog, I don't know if you can hear, she's being silly over there. It is a Wallace Flake is what we would call the holy grail among flakes. Try this exceptional blend and you will understand how we dare to make such a statement. Virginia tobaccos of varying colors ranging from gold to chocolate brown are combined with sun-cured Indian tobaccos and rounded off with a very light plum aroma. All right, well. So in the tin, you get one of these numbers, just like the Marlin Flake. You get the little wrapping with the gold little teardrop shaped sticker. Stickers, we've got stickers. Okay. And then what you have are flakes. They look about like that. Now, these are really very nice looking flakes. Right here, you can see what we got going on. You can see the Virginias, the chocolate brown, the whatever, whatever, the Lily, are you done? Are you done? <laughs> oh. MG. That's all I got to say. Anyway, back to the tobacco. So we got these nice flakes. Pretty thin, thin cut flake. Very, uh, very nice consistency. It's, um, holds together nice. It is fairly moist. You're, um, definitely not going to want to shove this in your pipe and smoke it right off the bat. You're going to want to dry that sucker out. So I think that that is what I am going to do right now is go ahead and get this sucker drying out because I'm going to smoke some of it right now. And, um, you know, I probably will be smoking several bowls of this tonight because I've got the brisket going. I'm going to be up every couple hours to check on it. So, you know, I might as well stay up a little later than normal. Seems, seems only logical. So, I'm going to go ahead and rub this out. Uh, I'm probably going to rub out about, yeah, about a flake. I think about a flake is enough. Rub out a flake, set it aside, and let it dry. And we will catch up momentarily for the packing of the bowl. Okay, so I got the tobacco drying out over there, and I figured while we were doing that, we would just take a quick minute and just kind of go over the basics of this tobacco because uh, up until today, I had never heard of Rattray's Wallace Flake. So what I'm going to do is just goggle it. We're just going to goggle it, see what other people have to say. So this is Virginia's, what did it say? Virginia's and sun-cured Indian tobaccos, whatever the heck that means. So chocolate brown, sun-dried India. What this says is, after k, &K lost the Peterson range to McBaron, they did not want to waste their recipes. They tweaked them a little, simply renamed the old Peterson line to be re-released under the Rattray's label. Malcolm Flake being Aaron Moore Flake. Oh, I didn't know that. Sterling Flake being Irish Flake. Wallace Flake being University Flake. Okay, that... Uh, Honestly, doesn't make much sense to me at all, but yeah, you know, whatever. Uh, it is what it is. So this says it's got a plum flavoring, and I can tell you, right now, what I get, 
probably should have had this closed. It's just been sitting here open on the desk. What I'm getting, I can buy. I can say I would agree with the plum topping, and it's not too terribly strong. You, there's a little bit of smokiness here too. I'm looking for the for the grass smell from the Virginias, but I'm not really getting a whole lot of that. Ah, eh, maybe a little. I'm getting actually I'm getting uh, quite a bit of plum. So here's what we're gonna do right now. This is quite wet. I probably could leave it in the tin for a little while. We're gonna go ahead and put it in a jar. We're gonna go ahead and jar it up because when you got so stinking many blends, and I'm sure a lot of you guys can attest to this, there's no way I probably could ever, no way I could ever finish this blend in the tin before it dried out. So we're just gonna go ahead and do the prudent thing which is to put it in a jar. So, uh, I think the next thing to do is to go and grab this. I'm gonna actually put a label on this and then I'm gonna go grab the tobacco off of the heater and see if it's dried out yet. And if it's dried out, we're gonna load it up in Frankenpipe 3D printed stem. <laughs> yeah, let's do this. Awesome. Okay. So, here we are. We have some Retre's Wallace Flake rubbed out and dried out. We're going to pack it up in Mr. Frankenstein here, Frankenpipe. And uh, we're just going to go for it here. We're going to just get into it because... I'm excited. Using the old geezer grabbing stuff method here again. Just grabbing it and a stuffing it. And I'm just going to keep on a grabbing it and a stuffing it till the pipe is full. So this is a flake and a half one and a half flakes and it is actually just about perfect yep just about perfect I'm going to go ahead and dump the rest of that on top of there throw that piece of paper on the floor and just finish packing this guy up we're getting close folks Okay, now, here we are. We are packed up and ready to go. So let's, let's just frickin' do this, people, shall we? Feels like I could pack it a little bit tighter. All right, so let me just crank down on that a little bit and give it another light. nice that's very nice
Well, as I've said many times before, folks, this is the very first time I've smoked this ever in my life, so you're not going to get much of a review out of me, but I can tell you right off the bat, I like it. Let me see if I can get this going to where I can keep it lit. Yeah, that's very nice. You know, I... I could probably sit here and pick apart all of the different flavors that I'm getting, if I really tried. But at the end of the day, would it change anything? No, not really. You can definitely tell that there's Virginia's in there. There's no doubt. And I'm definitely picking up some of the plum, which is kind of uh, kind of funny because a lot of the time when I smoke one of these that's topped with something, you know, you smell it and it's like, yeah, that smells like X. And then you smoke it and then you expect to taste said variable and then it doesn't come through. And, uh, you know, this one here, I'm actually getting a little bit of that, which is actually kind of nice. I know some people uh, having, a, having a topping of some sort is not necessarily enjoyable to them, but I, uh, I definitely don't mind it. I mean, as long as that's not all that I'm tasting, I'm okay with it. Yeah, that's nice. I don't know what else to say at this point. This is my very first bowl uh, of this stuff ever after never having heard of it. So I don't know what more I can say in, in that uh, I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, I really like it. And I, I cannot uh, see myself having trouble finishing this at all. This is very, very pleasant. I think the next thing I, I want to do, I probably should have dried it out just a little longer. It was pretty wet in the tin. And I am having a little bit of trouble keeping it lit. What I think I'm going to do, though, excuse me, is... I'm going to get a nice, large bunch of smoke going in here. And then I'm going to go upstairs, leave, come back, and then see how the room note is. That's really the only way that I can ever tell what the room note is smelling like, because when you're smoking it, you can't really smell it. It's unfortunate, but it's the truth. Okay, folks, I went and checked on the brisket. Things in the smoker are running just fine. And I am actually a little a little disappointed in the room note. And not in not in a not in I'm not saying that it stinks because it does not stink. It just there's not much there. The room note is very light, if any. I mean, seriously, I, I smoked down here. Uh, I went upstairs. I came back down. I really wasn't getting anything, so I went in the bathroom back there, closed the door, and I really just puffed up a whole bunch of smoke, left, went back, didn't really smell a whole lot. Matter of fact, maybe I'll go, maybe I'll go just have another whiff. Yes, folks, my original 
assessment of the situation holds true. It smells good, it's just not very strong. You, there's just not a whole lot there. So that can be a really good thing or it could be a not so good thing if you're you know, hanging out with somebody who really likes the way the pipe smoke smells. They're probably not gonna get a whole lot out of it. Uh, you could smoke something else and they would get something better out of it. However, if you are say hanging around somebody who doesn't really care for smoke or the smell of pipe smoke or the smell of smoke in general, you know, this one is not, uh, it's not gonna be terribly offensive to them because really there's not a whole lot there. Take it for what it is. I don't know what else to say. With that being said, now that I've been dorking around doing all this crap, I have let the pipe go out yet again. Let's relight it. I will tell you this, you don't want to smoke this too fast or too hard. I mean, I think that goes that goes without saying for all tobaccos. However, most of the time when I try to make a lot of smoke to do a room note check, um, you know, things don't go too terribly horribly. This, as I was really chiefing on it to create a lot of smoke, it did get a little bit, a little bit bitter. It got a little bit uh, bitter tasting. Now, if you smoke it at a normal pace, you're not going to ever have that because, like, I was really, really, really going to town on this. If you don't really, really, really go to town, you will never taste that. So that's, you know, I, I can't knock this tobacco for that because you really have to be smoking very irresponsibly in order to have that happen. So, you know, most pipe smokers know better than to just go to town on their pipes, except for me, apparently. All right, well. Mm, 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 mm. You know, the thing that I'm finding about pipe tobaccos is that it doesn't matter what pipe tobacco it is. Most of the time, at least as of late, I've liked everything. Um, I've got some half and half in the in the cabinet over there that, eh, whatever. I'm, it's not like I'm hurrying up to smoke that one because it's not the best. However, uh, everything that I've purchased lately has been just amazing marlin flake i really like the uh consummate gentleman that i bought back in newark or in new york i really like that the uh Gawith blends that i bought i like both of those yeah i mean you know i i uh, i haven't had a strikeout lately which is nice you know i've got a cabinet full of tobaccos that are really 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 tasty and uh so it makes it makes the evening bowl uh, kind of a, a tough choice, you know, when you got a cabinet full of tobaccos and then you're like, well, which one do I want to smoke? Oh, that's good, or no, oh, that one's good, or no, that one. Ah, oh, man, I don't know what to do. Choices, tough choices, so tough. Well, so that's gonna be the end of this video. Um, I am going to create some more video of the brisket that I have cooking outside, although I just barely put it in, as you guys saw. It's been in for maybe 30 minutes. So it's going to be another 10 to 13 hours until that sucker's ready, so I'm just going to let it smoke overnight, nice and slow. I'm not in a hurry to get this thing done. It's only a two-pounder. But sometimes the two pounders are the toughest because you just never know what they're going to do. Um, sometimes they'll cook nice and fast. Sometimes they'll just take forever. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen here. 
which is why I started it tonight, because I'll just get up every few hours in the middle of the night to check it, and uh, we'll just see how it goes, and I will hopefully try to take you guys along in the process. So if you get some... I just dumped ash all over myself. If you get some footage of me in my pajamas, don't be making fun of me, man. Don't do it. No, just kidding. Uh, you know, whatever. But anyway, I'm gonna sign off for now because uh, you know it's been a it's been a long week. I'm gonna smoke this bowl. I might go try to watch a movie. Uh, I don't know. It's Friday night. The wife and I went out to dinner and had some ice cream. Went to the thrift store. Found a found some cool stuff. We'll see. We'll see what the night brings. But for now, I must bid you farewell from Justin's joint. I'm Justin. It's been great chatting with you. We will see you guys next time.